Hey guys! Welcome back to my channel. When it comes to Italy, it's impossible not to mention Rome, the city that has earned the distinguished title of the Eternal City. Rome undoubtedly embodies the essence of eternity as the ancient capital, that has profoundly influenced human civilization. It has endured the ravages of countless tribes and emerged anew during the Renaissance. We spent three days in Rome, with one day dedicated to visiting the Vatican City, and the remaining two days exploring the streets of the Eternal City. The abundance of content in this episode leaves me unsure of where to begin. As you casually stroll through the streets, you'll encounter awe-inspiring remnants of classical Rome. Simultaneously, the city presents a feast for the eyes with its magnificent Baroque-style architecture, adorned with exquisitely carved sculptures and mesmerizing murals that dazzle and overwhelm the senses. Without further delay, let's embark on our exploration today. Starting with one of Rome's iconic landmarks, the Colosseum. It stands as a pinnacle of architectural brilliance and serves as a symbol of the city's allure. The Colosseum was one of the largest public constructions during the period of the Roman Empire. Built using architectural engineering techniques from 2000 years ago, it took eight years to complete. In the past, it served as a place where gladiators fought to the death. However, in the present day, it has become a battleground where more than 5 million visitors annually jostle for position. If you don't want to stand in line at the entrance for hours, I advise you to buy the ticket in advance. Once inside, you will notice that the entire interior of the Colosseum, including the arena, is constructed with bricks, making it remarkably sturdy. The original design featured a total of 76 entrances, allowing convenient access for nearly 60,000 spectators to enter swiftly. People often have the impression that only gladiators fought each other in the Colosseum, but in reality, there was much more. The Colosseum was actually a multifaceted arena for various combat performances, including segments where wild beasts fought each other. There were also confrontations between humans and animals. The climax, however, involved intense duels between human combatants. The sections featuring battles among wild beasts were usually considered warm-up acts, designed to engage the audience and prepare them for what followed, life or death matches between skilled gladiators. As you may notice, the Colosseum was divided into different zones. The first zone was reserved for nobles, high-ranking officials, and privileged individuals who occupied the exclusive VIP boxes. The second zone was occupied by higher-ranking members of Roman society, such as the knights. As you ascend higher, the third zone was occupied by wealthy individuals, while the fourth zone was for common Roman citizens. Each of these four seating areas was adorned with marble, and the level of intricate carving varied across each level, reflecting the clear distinction of social classes within different zones. As the Colosseum was a flagship project representing the pride of the nation, it had to be built with exceptional grandeur. However, if you look closely, you'll notice numerous holes on the walls. These holes were originally used to fix and decorate the stones. After the fall of the Roman Empire, when it came to using the finest materials, people often turned to the Colosseum, especially during the Renaissance period. Many churches were constructed using the remnants of ancient Roman ruins, making use of the materials and instruments left behind. That's why what you see now is merely a stripped-down remnant, leaving behind only the skeleton of this magnificent structure. What makes Rome truly enchanting is its history, where timelines intertwine and buildings spanning different eras stand side by side. After discussing the Colosseum, let's now turn our attention to the Arch of Constantine, situated perfectly between the Roman Forum and the Colosseum, within an intriguing free visitation zone that falls outside the realm of ticketed areas. The Arch of Constantine is known as the largest and newest triumphal arch still standing in Rome. Despite being considered the newest, it carries a remarkable history of 1,700 years as an ancient monument. Emperor Constantine the Great was one of the rulers of the Tetrarchy. Eventually, he emerged victorious over all other rulers, becoming the sole ruler of the Roman world. The Arch of Constantine was erected to commemorate his achievements. During his reign, Emperor Constantine played a significant role in officially legitimizing Christianity as a freely preached religion. As a result, Constantine holds a prominent place in history as a highly influential figure. And to its west, with a few minutes walk, you will reach another must-visit tourist spot, which is the Roman Forum. I would describe this location as somewhat lackluster, because in terms of Roman culture, 
it may be more important than the Colosseum. This is the heart of Rome, the city center. However, compared to the relatively intact Colosseum, the Roman Forum is in ruins. You really need a vivid imagination to understand what you're looking at. That being said, I still recommend that you at least come here and take a stroll because the area is quite large. If you walk from the entrance to the end and then back while admiring the surroundings, it will take at least an hour. From the grandeur of the remaining structures to the intricate decorations and carvings, it's like witnessing a once mighty and influential ancient civilization. The roads that Caesar walked, the paths Octavian, the Eternal Emperor walked, now you're walking them too. It's like entering a time tunnel, and imagining how magnificent the Roman Empire was 2000 years ago. If you are still watching, thank you for your support. I would like to share an Instagrammable place where you can have a spectacular view of the Colosseum, while enjoying a glass of cocktail. Just in case you don't know, the tea set here is free of charge. All you need to do is order two beverages. That concludes today's vlog. I hope it has kept you engaged and won't bore you. If you enjoyed this content and found my elaboration on Rome intriguing, please remember to show your support by hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, and enabling notifications so that you won't miss the upcoming episodes. In the next episode, we will continue our exploration of Rome, but with a lighter tone. I'll be highlighting some popular landmarks that you won't want to miss. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.